All right, so um, we're going to skip the next example that had us find an inverse of a three by three matrix uh, because it's kind of more of the same nonsense as was going on in the last example. And so I'm going to use this page of notes here to kind of double back to what we were talking about, about systems of equations and solving them via matrices. Because now that we have this notion of the matrix inverse, which is like multiplication by a reciprocal or something, we should be able to solve equations using that idea, applying it in a kind of numeric context, where we think of matrices as a kind of generalization of numbers. So suppose we have this system of equations here, 5x plus 7y equals 17, and 3x plus 4y equals 210. So with matrix multiplication, we can write this system as this matrix equation that this square matrix, 5, 7, and 3, 4 on the bottom, times this uh, column matrix whose rows are x and y equals to this other column matrix whose rows are 17 and 10. Um, notice how that works. So we have a 2 by 2 matrix here and a one by one matrix, or sorry, a, yeah, a two by two matrix here and a two by one matrix here, sorry. And so the inside numbers are two and two, those match up, and the output should be a two by one, right? Maybe I should write that actually. So here we have two by two, and here we have two by one. The inside numbers match, so the product makes sense, and then the product makes sense and it will be having size two by one. So, um, so notice that if we do this product then, the first row, first column entry will be five times X plus seven times Y. Okay. And the second row, first column entry will be three times X plus four times Y. Okay. And what we're saying is that we want that to product to be equal to this uh, pair of numbers 17 on the top and 10 on the bottom. So really, this is really what the bar was kind of standing for in the augmented matrices that we were looking at in regards to linear systems of linear equations. It was standing for multiplication by this column matrix whose rows are the variables in question. Okay, so now that we have an equation of this form, notice that it was exactly this column matrix, this X and Y that we were trying to solve for in that context. And so let's see what happens. I mean, we know how to solve equations of, let's pretend we had just like a numeric equation, like say A times X equals to B or something like that. How we would solve it, well, for x, we would just divide both sides by a, right? Or rather, multiply by the reciprocal of a. Or what is the alias for reciprocal in this context now, but multiplicative inverse. So if we multiply both sides by the multiplicative inverse of a, we would get x by itself, so we could solve that way for x. So let's see if the same idea should work with matrices, right? So. Um, we know the multiplicative inverse of this matrix here because we just found it in the previous example. It was this matrix here. So now let's multiply both sides of our equation by that multiplicative inverse of the matrix in question. And what we get then on the uh, right side is that we'll have, again, a two by one matrix. It's Top entry will be minus four times 17 plus seven times 10, and that is uh, two. Its bottom entry will be three times 17 minus five times 10, that is one. And on the uh, left side of the equation, we know how the product of a matrix with its inverse works. It gives us the two by two identity matrix in this case. Okay, and so now we have the two by two identity matrix times this column matrix X, Y equals to two, or two, one, this column matrix here. Okay, but we know what happens when we multiply this, um, this column matrix by this identity matrix, we'll have 
1 times x plus 0 times y at the uh, top, and we'll have 0 times x plus 1 times y at the bottom. Ah, so now we've got uh, the x equals 2 and y equals to 1. And that is the only solution to this system of linear equations. And we can check that here too, that 5 times 2 plus 7 times 1 is 17, and 3 times 2 plus 4 times 1 is 10. So that is, in fact, a solution. So here's yet kind of another way to solve systems of linear equations using matrices. Um, Notice, though, that you have to get the inverse of the matrix that you have in question. And so we haven't really said anything about this yet, but we will in a second. It's not always the case that a matrix has a multiplicative inverse. So, um, so that's one thing that's a little bit dicey about this way of solving systems of equations. Um, but we will see that in, we've seen already, I, I guess, that to solve for the inverse, the multiplicative inverse of a matrix, we use Gauss-Jordan elimination, which was basically the same thing that we used, exactly the same thing that we used to solve systems of linear equations with matrices. So at the end of the day, it's probably going to amount to like the same kind of, the same amount of, the same, basically the same work to do it this sort of seemingly different way. Okay, and so let's talk now at the very end just about how, when does a matrix actually have a multiplicative inverse? And so um, there's a couple of words for this. So if a matrix does not have an inverse, we say that it is singular. And um, if it does have an inverse, we say it is non-singular or maybe more sort of obviously we would say it is invertible. Um, so uh, we could check by just doing Gauss-Jordan elimination and you know, by the sort of method that we saw previously to find inverse of a matrix. Um, I'm not too keen on that way for two by two matrices because basically um, there's a shortcut. And since it's the end of the semester, let's just cut to the shortcut. So if we have a two by two matrix like this, whose top row is the letters A and B and whose bottom row is letters C and D, where of course these letters stand for numbers, um, We'll say that the matrix A has an inverse, or is invertible, or is non-singular, if and only if the product A times D minus the product B times C is not equal to zero. <clears throat> so let's check it for this one. We have six times ten is sixteen, or sorry, six times ten is sixty, minus five times or fifteen times four. Okay, well that's also sixty. So 60 minus 60 is zero. So this matrix does not have an inverse. It is singular. Okay. So another fun fact associated to the shortcut is that if we have that, that number A times D minus B times C is not zero, then the inverse matrix is given by one over that funny number rescaling the matrix whose entries are D minus B on the top and minus C A on the bottom. Uh, let's check and make sure that the matrix whose inverse we found earlier does sort of abide by this rule because we were noticing at the end of the previous video that it looked like the inverse matrix was related to the original one with just some kind of jumbling up and um, jumbling up of the numbers and introducing some minus signs. So let's go back to that previous example here um, and notice that we had this matrix 5, 7 was on the top and 3, 4 was on the bottom. So let's do that. Let's find the number AB minus BC, that is 5 times 4 minus 7 times 3. That's 20 minus 21, that is minus 1, right? So um, the inverse matrix, then following that rule, should be a inverse should be one over minus one times the matrix that we get when we interchange these two. So we'll have four down up there and five down here and negate these two. So we'll have minus seven there and minus three there. 
Okay. So then what's going on here? We have a little bit of scalar multiplication of the matrix by this number one over minus one. Well, one over minus one is just minus one. So let's see what's going on there. We ultimately will have uh, minus one times four is minus four. Minus one times minus seven is seven. Minus one times minus three is three. And minus one times five is minus five. Ah. And I do believe that is exactly the inverse matrix that we found by gauss jordan elimination, um, or really, I guess it's elementary row operations, but it's the same procedure as gauss jordan elimination. All right, so that was fun. All right, so um, let's do one more solving of a system of linear equations by finding a multiplicative inverse of a matrix. So here we've got this matrix, or sorry, we've got this system of linear equations, 3x plus y equals 11, and 4x minus 3y equals 2 minus 7. Um, and we can set it up as we did in the sort of, uh, as we did before for that other example. So we'll write this as a matrix equation now, uh, where we have the matrix whose Entries are 3 and 1 on the top and 4 and minus 3 on the bottom times the column matrix whose entries are x and y is going to equal to the column matrix whose entries are 11 and minus 7. So let's check to make sure that the matrix on the left has a multiplicative inverse. The um, number in question is interesting. 3 times minus 3 minus 1 times 4 is uh, minus 13, which is certainly not 0. So we do have that, uh, that inverse matrix. Um, and we can get it by saying 1 over minus 13, rescaling the matrix whose entries are uh, minus 3 and minus 1 on top and minus 4 and 3 on the bottom. OK. So then if we do a little bit of work here, we get that the inverse matrix has row top row 3 over 13 and 1 over 13. And bottom row is 4 over 13 and minus 3 over 13. So then we can multiply both sides of this matrix equation by this multiplicative inverse of the matrix on the left. And that basically cancels the two out on the left and leaves us with just x, y. And then on the, um, on the right, we'll have this inverse matrix times the column matrix with entries 11 and minus 7. And that product becomes what? So 3 over 13 times 11 plus 1 over 13 gives us the number 2. All right, sorry. 3 over 13 times 11 plus 1 over 13 times minus 7 gives us the number 2. And 4 over 13 times 11 plus minus 3 over 13 times minus 7 gives us the number 5. So x equals to 2, y equals to 5 is the only solution to this system of linear equations here. And that's going to do it for us for this semester. So um, we'll see you.